There it goes. Hi everybody, it's Franny, and this is the 996 Turbo, but I think it's feeling a little bit neglected. We did put that clutch slave cylinder in, and that went great, but we have another issue on the car. The radiator here on the front left is now leaking, so that is going to be today's project, is to swap out this radiator. Let me give you a little background on this. These radiators are aftermarket radiators. The original Porsche radiators have plastic caps on the top and the bottom and they have a tendency to weep really bad. So we swapped these out about four years ago from a company called CSF and they're all aluminum radiators used for racing and off-road and stuff and should be pretty solid. But unfortunately, this one developed a leak. And so the cool thing about CSF is that their, their customer service is amazing. So I just called the guy that I bought these things from originally and he just asked me which one it was and he shipped a new one out. I mean, that's pretty solid, it's pretty sweet. So I guess this is the point when uh, all you air-cooled folks can kind of sit there and gloat all right, well, we'll, you know, it's okay, we'll wait. Mm -hmm. Continue gloating, continue gloating. So the engine on this car actually dates back to the GT1. It's a Metzger racing engine, and those engines back in the day are really similar, actually, to the old, the old engines that were used in the air-cooled cars. And I have a sneaky suspicion that this poor car just does not want to be liquid cooled. We've had pretty much the majority of problems we've had have been with the cooling system on this car. So it's just one of those things. But at any rate, okay, so we got a few things to do. We're going to have to drain all the coolant. We're going to have to pull the radiator out, swap in the new one, and then refill, refill the coolant. But I got some cool things I want to show you about that. All right, so let's get started. Let me run you through a few of the things we're going to need. Obviously, we're going to need a bucket, but the important thing is that the bucket needs to be super duper clean. And I've got a couple of smaller containers because I think the car takes about six gallons of fluid. We're going to be dropping the radiator hose from the bottom of the front. Not sure how much we're going to get out, but I just want to be ready. So be ready for that. I super duper cleaned out the inside of my bucket. Now this is so that I, you can use any kind of t-shirt or something. I'm going to strain the fluid as it comes out so that uh, it goes into the bucket nice and clean. I don't want any debris or anything because we're going to be putting it back in the car. Now I know that we've lost some coolant. So I have this from the last time I did it. This is just the standard Porsche coolant, but I've mixed it uh, with just water 50-50, so this is ready to go. So we'll top off with this if we need to. If we need to go get more, we'll have to go get more, but hopefully this is about all we need. Okay, so this is the coolest thing here that we're gonna be using. It's called an Airlift 2, and it's a vacuum fill device. So you hook up your, your air compressor to it, and it has a Venturi in there, and it actually pulls a vacuum in the entire cooling system, and pulls all the air out. That's how you fill it without getting a bunch of air in the system or having to bleed and, and burp and bleed and burp. In this car, the, the 996 turbos are kind of a pain to get bled properly if you just pour the coolant in. Now, one weird thing about this, I think it didn't come with a connector guy for the for your air compressor. So a little, little teat here. So check that. If you do buy one of these things and you think, oh, that'd be super sweet. Um, Schwaben makes a really good one as well, so you might want to check out that one too. I've used this one, works great. I used it last time we had the problems on the car, so it's tried and true. Uh, but I don't think it came with this, so double check that. You may need one of these, and then of course a little bit of tape to put it on, so no big deal. It does come with its long hose and stuff, so pretty much the, the concept is you just, you just pull a vacuum on the system and then you open up the valve to your hose, which pulls out of your bucket, and it pulls the fluid in. It's pretty sweet. Okay, great. Uh, definitely need some safety glasses because you don't want coolant in your face or in your eyes, and we'll need a little screwdriver to get our clamps off and stuff, so I'll show you that. Um, gloves, of course. And this is our new radiator back here. So this is the one that CFF sent. So I think that's pretty much all we're going to need for this project. We might need a few other little things, but all right, let's get to draining that fluid. This is our connection down here that we're going to have to take off the bottom radiator hose. There's a clip here that goes all the way up to the top here. Now this clip is, there's a new one on the new radiator, so I'm not going to worry too much about, the, about preserving this clip. 
So we're just gonna have to take it off. Once that clip is off, we can just wiggle the hose out. But it's still pretty dirty underneath here. I, I definitely wanna clean this. You can see the old coolant here where it was leaking and coming down here. I originally thought maybe it was leaking at this point or the hose was bad, but the hose is clean underneath and this, this junction is clean as well. So this obviously came from above. And then as I looked up the side of the radiator, you could see it as well. So first step I wanna do is just to clean all around here. I don't want any of that in my bucket. We'll start by just cleaning this off a bit, making sure this whole area is totally clean. Next step's gonna to be to get our clips off up here. So I'm just, normally you can kind of stick the screwdriver underneath here and pull it out, but I'm, it's just easier if you kind of pop it off on the top there where it comes off like that and then move it out of the way like this, kind of towards the hose itself. There we go. So just so you know, that's how the clip, that's what the clip looks like. It's got hooks on each side, really not a big deal. Now, there's nothing holding this on anymore, so if I wiggle this out, it will definitely come through. So, let's go ahead and get ready. Well, what do you think of this? This is the blue protectant piece that they put over the radiator when they shipped it. And I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and bend it up into a little bit of a chute and have my bucket here at the end. And in theory, it should work and um, shouldn't make a huge mess, and I should only need two hands to do this. Now, I am, I am aware that my face is actually at the end of this chute, so it could get crazy, could be fun. I've got it blocked up in the back with a big uh, rubber block, so let's see how this goes. There we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's going to get exciting. There it goes. Super exciting. All right, no, that's okay. It doesn't have to all come down at, you know, lightning speed. Oh, there wasn't much water in there at all. That seems funny. I think we don't have any air coming into the system. So now before we go too much further, this is the reason why we're using the shirt here. Look at all that debris. Even after cleaning that thing off, there's still a bunch in there. And that's the last thing you want to put back into your radiator system. Here we go. More excitement. All right, it's kind of loose-ish. Yeah, a little bit at a time. I think at this point it would be good to go ahead and pop the cap off the reservoir and let this drain the rest of the way. I think I can hear it sort of going glug, 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 glug. So I know the air is trying to get back into the system. Let's go ahead and give it a hand. This is our reservoir back here. We just need to take this off. Ooh. How are we doing here? There we go. All right, look at that. Yep, that's what we needed to do, just to break the air seal a little bit, a little bit, a little more air in the system here. Well, let's go ahead and pull that cap completely off and just make sure we've got all the coolant out of the system. All right, and this little guy is a burper. So we're gonna pop that up as well. Yep, we can hear it again. There we go. All right. Looks like we still have a little bit dribbling out. I'm just gonna kind of leave the system to drain a bit, I think and come back when this thing is completely done. So in our bucket here, look at this, we've got a bit of debris in there. So this little shirt thing worked really, really well as a filter. Look at all that, huh? Yeah, you don't wanna put that back in your cooling system. Well, it's kinda of still piddling, and it's been piddling for a bit. I know there's a lot more fluid in the system because I've only got about two and a half gallons or so out of it. The reason I want to get as much out as possible is because that airlift vacuumy fill thingamabobber works best if the system is completely empty, but I'd rather not go through the fuss of draining it at all the different radiators and stuff. So I think two and a half gallons is probably okay. If we run into a problem, of course, we can drain more. But at this point, I really just want to get to getting the radiator off and getting all this swapped out and this thing is still 
whiz-a-doodling here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of plastic over it and some rubber bands just to get it to stop and uh, we're gonna get on with our work. <laughs> Now our next step is to get the radiator out of its little cage. So there's a mount way back there. You can kind of see it back there, that bolt back there. And then there's one underneath, and this is a kind of a cage. The radiator sits in rubber mounts all the way around. So we have to sort of disassemble the cage a bit. And the other part of the cage is right here. So that bolt there. Before I take the cage completely off, I'm going to take these snaps off here that hold the radiator. So this pin right here in the center is part of the radiator. And they just they hold them onto these rubber mounts. I just think once we get this thing loose and everything, it's going to be a lot easier to have these things already free. So they're pretty simple. Just stick your screwdriver under here and work it up to where it's sitting on top of the pin there and then just slide them off. It's a big old washer behind them as well. There we go. Now you'll need a good long extension to get back to that guy there. It's all the way back there. All right. All right. This way, this way. All right, there we go. Now we can pull it out. There we go. Just sort of work it out. All right, so I have this clip off. We're good there. And then next to it, there's another one, this guy right here. I can just sort of pull this one down and kind of get it off as well. There it goes, pops on one side and get it loose on the other. There we go. We just need it up and out of the way. Now, just a real quick point here. It would have been a lot easier if I'd taken the wheel off, and there's a reason why I didn't do that. One, this car has ceramic brakes and it always makes me nervous to take the wheel off. If I prang that disc, boy, these things are stupid expensive. The second reason is I think the car's always way more stable if it's on all fours. I've got the wheel turned to the right as far as it'll go, but uh, it does make it a little more difficult to get things in and out, but I feel it's a little bit safer as well. There it goes, all right. Well, that's gonna be a little bit tight, huh? So I think the hot setup was to come up from underneath and reach up there and wiggle it and pull backwards and push the radiator forward and it, it finally did come out. So, okay, so we got that one off. We just have the teeny little one next to it. It was a little hard to get out, but it's off. Woo! -hoo! At this point, all we have to do is to get our final pin here in the front off and the radiator will be free. With our pin free, we can then pull the radiator out here and twist it around. We still have our fan hooked up, so we need to disconnect the electrical connection for the fan. You just have to push this connector together on the end here. Kind of hear that little snap. And then just pull the wire out. There we go, like that. And that's it. With the old radiator out, it's a pretty straightforward process to just get the fan off the old one and put it on the new one. There's just two screws here on the end and then some plastic clips on the other side. I'm going to also take this opportunity to sort of clean things as well, just to make sure everything is all good and clean and we don't have like crap or bugs or whatever stuck in everything. Using a touch of this silicone grease here just to help sort of lubricate this a bit so that it just goes on a little bit easier because these these can be a bear to get on all right so just work this guy up it only goes in one way and then there it goes see how much easier that was 
Holy cow, that was way easier because we used a little bit of silicone paste there. That made life a million times easier, popped right in. All right, so we have our hoses up at the top there. We have to get to as well. I think I'm gonna try and get to them from up top though. I think it'll just be a little bit easier, but there they are up there, so we have to get those guys too. Now's the moment of truth. Now we get to fill the whole system back up and put our coolant back in and make sure we don't have any leak. Okay, it's the moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and fill the system. Now this is the thing I wanted to show you, this Airlift 2. It is really kind of an interesting device here. So the way it works is you've got your air compressor hooked up to it and it has a Venturi here on the side. And when you push this button, it blows air out of this thing and sucks a vacuum from down below. And so what it's doing is pulling all the air out of your cooling system. So with no air in the cooling system, when you put the fluid in, you won't have any air bubbles. It's pretty sweet. It's kind of a neat system. So we've got our hose up here and a valve. So we have to wait. There's a gauge on the top of this and you want to pull about 25 or so pounds of vacuum and then you're all set. Then you open up the valve, get the fluid up there, and close the valve really quick like funny. Then do it again just to make sure you get all the air out of the system. And then, and then you just open this valve and go ahead and fill your entire system. And you'll know your system is full because uh, the vacuum will go away. So it replaces the vacuum with your fluid. It's kind of cool, it's a neat system. So we just put it over the top of our reservoir. Kind of have to hold it down. It has a conical shaped bit here on the on the end of it. So you wanna make sure it has a good connection. And another important thing is it needs about 90 PSI from your air compressor. And mine's pretty crappy, and so it's going to be up and down and up and down a few times. But even if you have a small air compressor, you can get it to finally pull the vacuum it needs. Now the, the other added benefit of that is if it won't hold the vacuum, then you've got a leak in your system somewhere. So that's a great way to sort of detect, do I have a leak? It's got, kind of got leaks. You'll know because it'll just suck air in through those leaks and you won't be able to hold a vacuum on your gauge. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put this on the reservoir top here. We're all set. It's kind of tight quarters in here, but I am able to get a seal. And we've got our flexible line going up this way and our air compressing line here. So, all right, this is gonna take a little bit and you'll hear the air compressor turn on, but um, okay, here we go. We're pretty much at the maximum vacuum that my little air compressor will do, which is right up really close to the green. I think it's gonna be fine. I think it was like that last time. Okay, so our next step, now that we've pulled the maximum vacuum we can, is to open up the valve that runs the hose back to our fluid. This is gonna be a bit of air in the tube here that's gonna be introduced into the system. So once we get the fluid just coming right up here, we're gonna stop it and we're gonna do our Venturi thing again just to get that last little bit of air out. All right, so here we go. Now suck the fluid up. Whoa, it comes up quickly though. Here we go. All right. Okay, that's about the best we can do, I think. There we go. We've got this off. We'll go ahead and hit our Venturi again, just get that last little bit of air out. All right, now that we've pulled the maximum vacuum we can and we've sort of burped the system, last thing is just to open our valve. And it literally sucks the fluid right into the cooling system without any air. It's really kind of a cool system. And when it's done, you're done pretty much. You might be a little bit low, you can top off with a little bit at that point, but at that point what we're going to do is start the car and back it up. We have a pretty steep driveway, so I'm going to put the, bun, the butt up in the air and start the car and turn on the little, um, there's a little burper here that we'll go ahead and open that up and let the car come up to temperature and 
all that sort of stuff and rev it up a few times and things just to get any remaining air bubbles. Now, because we didn't pull out all of the fluid, this isn't like a perfect method. It works really, really well if you have a completely dry system, then it works great. And a super strong compressor, that really helps too. Let's see how we doing here. See what we've got left. Yep, we still have a bit of vacuum. You can always just sort of test to see where you are by turning the valve off and watching the vacuum go back up again. It'll drop right back down again when you open the valve. So it should go to zero down here when we're completely done. A quick check of our fluid level here. We can see we're almost down at the bottom there, huh? I'm going to go ahead and prop up the back here so that we've... There we go. So we can... So we don't draw any air. You don't want to pull any air into the system. See how we're doing. Yeah, we still have a little bit. Still pulling up fluid. It's a little monotonous, a little slow. But it's getting there. We're almost out of fluid. Yep, see we almost have no vacuum left. All right, I'll just keep going here. So you know you're done when you turn your valve and the needle doesn't move at all. It means there's no more pull inside there sucking up any fluid. And if you've got the end of the hose in your bucket out of the fluid and you don't see any air traveling up, there's obviously nothing coming up. So we're done. Don't be tempted at this point to hit the, um, to hit this valve again, because if you do, there's, this thing is now submerged in there and it'll just suck fluid right up into the Venturi and just make a big old mess. So don't do that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. There we go. And it's right up at the top. So it's pretty full. Okay, our reservoir is nice and full. Our next step's going to be to pull the car out turn it around, get its butt up in the air, and we're gonna run it until it gets good and warm. I'm gonna put the burper on and see if we can get any more air out of the system, but I'm sure it's probably pretty darn close. And uh, the other big thing, of course, is we'll be checking for leaks up front. So we wanna get it hot enough to where the fans actually turn on. So, okay, so that's the next step. Looks like our coolant level is a little low down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some coolant in there and bring that reservoir back up. I'm gonna stop the car at this point to do that. And um, that'll just take a second. Okay, there we go, back up to the max. All right, now we'll go ahead and warm the car up again. Our temperature at this point is still pretty low. We're looking to be somewhere around 180 there. Uh, we're not there. So we wanna be like uh, 90 C or something, which is about 180 degrees. So we still have to warm the car up a bit. It's gonna take a little bit of time for it to warm up. Looks like the needle's moving ever so slowly. All right, well, we'll check in again when it's good and warm. Let's go ahead and check for leaks here. I don't expect to find any because we were able to hold a pretty good vacuum. So it looks like the top one is nice and dry. What about this one on the bottom here? It looks pretty dry too. So that's good. That looks great. The radiator is nice and dry all the way through. All looks good. I don't see any coolant level, coolant down in that trough or anywhere else. So I think we're pretty good here. I don't see any leaks. It's all really good. Looks like our temperature is up. That looks great. Our oil pressure looks awesome as well. Everything looks good here. Check our fluid level here. That's probably a little easier way to see it there. All right, checking our fluid level. We're right at the minimum mark. So we're gonna probably need to add a little bit to it. That's fine. We're also nose down as well. So 
that could affect this reading a little bit. Checking the temperature on the radiator. Look at that, we're up to 95, 99. There we go, 106, 118. Kind of all around a little bit. Let's check our other one. Similar, really close. Sounds good. This car actually has three radiators, so let's see if we can get a reading on the center radiator. It looks pretty cold, so it may not have clicked open yet. Well, I think what I'm going to do at this point is take the car out and just kind of drive it around the neighborhood a little bit just to warm it up. It's, it's pretty cold out. It's like in the 40s or something, so the car is going to have to kind of drive a little bit to warm up. I just want to hear those front radiators click on and then we can double check our level when I get back. All right, there we go. We got our front fans going. That's great. That makes me feel really, really good. You want to make sure that they're running and that all the cooling is flowing through up here. So good to hear them running. They're running on both sides, which is great. All right. Well, that was a success. Our new radiator is installed. Seems to be working fine. We burped the system, used our vacuum filler thing, and I don't think we have any air in the system at all. Our fans were turning on. I think everything's good up here. So the rest of this is just to reassemble the front of the car, obviously put the scoops on and go ahead and get the bumper back on. So if you're not really that interested in that, that's fine. Thank you so, so much for watching. But I'm going to go ahead and continue on with this because I started without the bumper on. So um, people are probably like, well, okay, great, but how do you get the bumper off? Because that's kind of step one. It's actually not too difficult at all. It's actually super easy, really. But there are a couple of gotcha screws. So I want to point those out as I go. But uh, pretty much, we just uh, put all the bits back on, obviously. So it's really not particularly complicated for such a kind of a crazy car. These things really come apart pretty easily and go back together pretty easily. It's something I love about German engineering is that uh, I love the Ferrari. Ferrari is a beautiful car and it was engineered really well to go together, but not quite so much to come apart. But the Porsches, they kind of go both ways. You can, you can put them together very easily and you can take them apart pretty easily as well. It's kind of neat. So, all right. So let me go ahead and get to this. If you are going to go through the whole trouble of taking off your bumper and everything, do take the big air scoops off the side, get a vacuum cleaner, get in here and vacuum all this stuff out. There's an invariably a decent number of leaves and all sorts of crap that gets stuck in there and it can really be a problem. And if you pick up something that's on fire and there's leaves and stuff in there with all that wind, you could even have a small fire in there. So you just want to make sure they're clean, make sure the radiators are unobstructed and they're doing their job. So I've already done all that. It's all nice and well, we have a new radiator over here, but on the other side, I went ahead and pulled the big scoop and cleaned it all out in there and vacuumed it and such. So it's all nice and clean. Next step is gonna be literally just to put bits back together. So I think I'm gonna start actually on the other side, putting the scoop back in that I just took off. And then I'll put this one on and see where we go. I've got all of my trays here and they've all got different bits from different assemblies. So I'm all set here to put everything back together. It doesn't take a lot of tools either. It take, does take a torque drive and a couple of sockets and stuff, but it's, it's really pretty that simple. Okay, so let's get started with putting this whole thing back together and getting our bumper back on.
And all of our parts trays are empty, so we've gotten all of our fasteners in. I believe we've got them all in the right spot. It is kind of tricky because there's so many different types of fasteners near, huh? You've got a plastic pins, you've got big huge uh, torques with a, with a shoulder around them, ones without shoulders, you've got Phillips screws with a fluted thing on them. Oh my gosh, it's kind of crazy. So just keep your wits about you, but that's it, we're all done. The bumper is almost all back together. We're done underneath the car. There's one last trim piece I'll show you on the top and then we'll be finished. We don't want to forget to put our pin in. I've lubricated it a little bit so that it'll go in a little bit easier, I hope. There it goes, all the way. Okay, that's great. And then finally, we put the bulb back in our turn, or our sort of side marker here, and it goes in really easily. That just, see the little, the little forks at the end there? They hook in there, and then you just pretty much just push this guy in and there you go, and that's it. So this would be the very first thing you would take off if you're gonna start this project, would be to take off the side markers. Well, that was a bit more work than I thought it was going to be, but I think we were successful. The radiator's back in, it's not leaking, we've got the system burped, and I think we're great. The front fans were turning on. Now, I did, after I brought the car back in, I let it cool back down again and check the level, and it was just a hair above the min. So I went ahead and put a little more fluid in. That should be fine. I still have the little bale, the little wire on the burper up. So I'll leave that up for a few days or a few drives at least. And then after three or four drives, I think it's probably fine. You can go ahead and put that right back down again. No big deal. So, all right, I think that's it. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of a bit of stuff, huh? So if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Thank you, a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.